Good morning and welcome to Tim's Tech Blog. Here at Venom Motorsports Canada, so this week we're having a look at braking systems. And if you've read the blog, you'll notice that we uh, we describe you know braking systems that are cable ba uh, based as well as hydraulic. And today we're going to have a look at the systems on various bikes we've got here and then go into a little bit more detail on the hydraulic end of things. So with our electric dirt bikes, you'll notice that this design features a brake disc, but it's a cable-based system, meaning that you have a cable to transmit the force from the brake lever all the way down to the caliper unit, which will then grasp the disc. So this is the caliper unit for this braking system, and this, of course, is the disc plate. So the caliper is going to be contracted when you pull on the lever to squeeze in on the caliper to again make contact with the disc and when the disc has full metal contact with the brake pads that's how you're going to stop. So on these electric dirt bikes both the rear brake and the front brake feature the same design so these are cable based systems. Now typically on a bike that is a manual so a larger bike if you're dealing with a dirt bike with a clutch which is what we have here of course things start to change a little bit because the braking system is designed so that you'll still have a front brake but the rear brake is going to be on the side and you're gonna have to depress this hydraulic lever that you see right here in order to actuate the brake itself so if you follow this you push down on the brake lever activates the piston plunger which then goes down to the rear caliper the rear caliper brake pads squeeze the disc and of course you stop. Now in a perfect world, if you were a perfect driver, you're going to be able to manipulate the braking system on a dirt bike or any larger vehicle so that half of the force is going to the rear wheels and about half of the force is going to the front. The reason for this is if you squeeze the front lever, again this is a hydraulic based system, we squeeze the front lever, produce a force a hydraulic force in the master cylinder. The brake fluid is then pressurized and this pressure acts all the way down to the slave cylinder down on the bottom, the caliper. Two pistons push out on the brake pads and then act on the disc. So again, if you're using this hydraulic brake system and squeeze and use all of your braking energy on the front wheel, there's a very good chance that you're going to fly right over the front handlebars. So you got to be really careful with that and try and ensure that when you're using the brakes themselves you apply an equal force to the rear and the front of the vehicle. So that's one of our dirt bikes and if we pull back a little bit further over here and have a look at the ATVs again you're going to find a similar system. Because it's a larger vehicle you're going to find typically a hydraulic based system and over here again on the rear you can see the plunger the plunger again transmitting hydraulic force back to the caliper the caliper squeezing in on the brake pads the brake pads squeezing in on the disc and of course allowing the vehicle to stop and here we have even a larger bike <laughs> a little bit vintage but again similar principles so basically larger bikes all hydraulic smaller vehicles cable based when you're looking at the hydraulic systems they typically consist of a lever or an actuator that you see here that you're going to be able to apply some sort of force to a squeezing force a pushing force this force is then going to be transferred down to the brake caliper through what's referred to as the master cylinder the master cylinder inside this this body has a piston so that as you squeeze the lever the piston moves forward and the piston then, then applies a force and the force is directed to the hydraulic fluid. What makes hydraulic systems so interesting is that when you apply force on a liquid the force is then transmitted through the hydraulic fluid equally and undiminished through all of the piping. So the force that you apply and produce here pressurizes the fluid, the fluid then moves through this system to provide a force down here at the slave cylinder where the pistons are located. There's two little pistons inside here then that are pushed out 
against this fixed plate and the brake pad then squeezes in on the disc between this position here and here. So what sort of things do you need to do to maintain the brake system? Well, typically I tell people the best thing that they can do is to check and ensure that it functions well before each ride. The worst time to figure out that you have brake issues is when you really need them. So always double check the brakes, you know, put a little bit of pressure on the control lever here, pull back on the lever, ensure that it actually stops the wheel on your vehicle. The other thing to note when you're doing regular maintenance on your bike is to have a look at the pads. Now if you need new brake pads, we certainly can accommodate that here at Venom Motorsports and we're happy to give those to you. Now, how can you tell if your pad has been overly used? You'll notice that the thickness on these pads is somewhere in the neighborhood of about 20 to 22 mils. So when you're playing with this, have a look at the pad. If the pad looks extremely thin or worn, by all means, please replace it. Other than that, the pistons that you see here inside the caliper body really require very little maintenance. And that's true for both the front and the rear brake assembly. You know, it's basically a sealed unit. So keep them clean, keep the brake pads in good shape, and you'll have no problems, and you'll always be able to come to a complete stop when you need to. That's it for this week's tech blog. Thank you very much for watching, and please subscribe to our YouTube video channel. Thanks again, and have a great day. Enjoy the ride. Bye-bye.